things easy for us from an engineering point of view. We are trying to analyze specific things. We cannot deal with very complex uh, issues. So basically, we are focusing on melodic and rhythmic issues of Hindustani and Carnatic music. And today, we have heard quite a bit about the melodic issues and about uh, the gamakas and about the, the pitch issues. And we haven't talked at all about rhythm and about the percussion. So uh, I would like first, maybe uh, we can hear a little bit, maybe especially uh, the, the musicians and maybe also the, 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 from an engineering point of view. Um, what do you think, in terms of uh, rhythmic characteristics, what would be possible differences that uh, you think exist uh, between uh, Carnatic and Hindustani music in a way that can be uh, uh, formalized and that can be explained and, and be verbalized so that hopefully if we have to develop uh, a recognition system like uh, with this uh, technologies of uh, machine learning that uh, Joan Sarai explained, what issues should we be looking at in order to distinguish uh, tabla playing from a uh, playing. So maybe uh, Dr. Monica can, can start. Uh. Well, this is a very really difficult uh, task for me because I am a um, singer, not a percussionist. So I won't be able to tell that way. But uh, acoustically speaking, rhythm and tabla has different kind of um, acoustics and uh, in uh, uh, Hindustani music we have a system of coming back to sum on every cycle after every cycle we have to come to the sum that is the first uh, uh, matra or beat of that whole cycle of ta mm. <laughs> so uh, I do not know about uh, I have always thought that it uh, actually improvises, it doesn't play the theka. Am I right? Uh, not the theory, I, I, I will address it. Yeah, so <laughs> while we sing, while we sing, uh, mainly the tabla player uh, follows the uh, main rhythm cycle that is called theka in Hindi. And uh, then we uh, leave some specific uh, space for him to improvise, but uh, um, in between he doesn't uh, disturb him. But while you know, uh, on how can I say that? Uh, while I'm, I'm, I have been in Olympia Radio, and I have been recording. As I said earlier, that I was recording in uh, on computers, and uh, while in analog uh, comp uh, recording also, I faced the problem like we couldn't. Uh, control the sound of uh, percussion instruments when a vocalist was singing uh, percussion will come more uh, vibrant than the vocal uh, parts so there was there used to be quite balancing problems and this and that uh, this was uh, practically i am telling that this is the difficulty i used to face while recording and when uh, the computer system of recording came we could a bit, you know, later on, while on editing, we could uh, somehow address to the problem, which in analog recording we could not do. And um, what else? What else can we say? Dr. Banerjee is an expert on Karanas. I think you've spoken very widely about uh, the different Karanas and their you know, characteristics and so on. So maybe, uh, you know, since you know so much about Hindustani music, Karanas, uh, you know, can... Yeah. Actually, I belong from Delhi Karana only, and Delhi Karana uh, is a something different from Tala altogether, I think, from my thing. But uh, Delhi Garana music is uh, certainly a distinct kind of uh, style of rendition. While uh, uh, doing the ala portion of the khayal, we sing mainly khayal. We do not sing the Drupal form. We mainly sing khayal. And uh, khayal, in, uh, khayal, while doing the vilambic portion, we have a special kind of uh, way to uh, do the alapana 
to uh, approach the nodes in such a way that uh, in some some dharanas uh, the um, nodes are approached in a more um, aggressive kind of way where it is very soft in our Delhi dharana. Like uh, and uh, when we progress from one node to the other node, you will not find much uh, uh, steps in between those transitions. We will uh, just glide from one note to another note. Mostly it is appreciated that way. Like if I sing. I just think it's, um, I won't say it's much more, I just think it's different. See, I, I'm, what I'm going to talk about is present day developed rhythmical styles. Um, one is because we have such complex compositional forms which are large in terms of how they're divided and presented. Therefore, the development of accompanying them has also changed. In fact, uh, if you try and see here very, very old recordings of the, till the 1920s, you do not see as much development as you see have you seen in the last eight years. That's true. And in terms of how it is accompanied, there, are, there is one where it is I want, similar to the Deka style, where it is only the rhythm is kept more or less, and uh, it's followed. But there are two distinctive approaches that most people talk about. One is to play the composition itself. The other is to play for the composition. And I think um, that's very, very important. And that's 
the basic difference. When I say play the composition itself, the, the Mridangam accompaniment will play every movement, every variation, if they know the composition well, as it is sung. So you will see the rhythm actually coming constantly along with every movement. For example, if I sang well, some composition, Now the first role of the Mridangam is to establish what we call the Kala Pramana or the speed. So usually a, an intelligent Mridangam player will not start playing immediately. He will wait for at least one cycle to go for the singer to settle the speed. Second is to establish the gait of the composition, which is distinct from the speed of the composition. The gait is determined by melodic flow and syllabic flow. Is what he generally would do. So he established the, the syllabic melodic structure. Then the possibilities, there are melodic variations in the composition. You'll hear a bit. It'll be exactly what I said. Which is basically the syllabic structure of what I said. This is one way. At the same time, depending on the mode of where the composition is, he may or she may also play only tekas. Because the, the composition flow is such that it requires only calm and soft accompanying of the rhythmic cycle only. Another way is cross rhythmical, where they don't actually play the composition, but they are playing cross rhythms based on the structure of the composition and the structure of the tal, which is difficult for me to do as I'm saying, it's almost impossible to do. These are th these are the basic ways you can, of course, and then the improvisation does happen, but the improvisation is subsidiary to the compositional flow. The improvisation in accompanying a composition has to be subsidiary to the composition's own melodic flow. So the, the accompanying artist is improvising or making changes based on what the music is turning. Now, accompanying for improvisation, when I take up a line for improvisation, is again, can be absolutely individual. But again, the priority is what is the root of the improvisation? Both in terms of voice frequency, in terms of loudness, that affects also how loud. Sometimes the same composition sung by two singers, depending on the texture of their voice, will determine the way of accompanying by the Mridanga play. Because a far stronger rendition will generally see a far stronger accompaniment. So the texture of the voice also affects the accompanying technique. Then, other than the texture of the voice, also the singer's own um, improvisation in terms of whether the improvisation is purely melodic, whether it is mathematical, then there's a question of anticipation. When it is a question of anticipation, then you will sometimes see one trying to preempt the other. It can be tough to break all those things. So, the whole accompanying te technique, while it's very, I think, the basic rule that the great accompanists have always followed is it's based on the melody. It's based in based on the melody, on the composition, on the improvisation, and based on all these aspects, the sound, the, the texture, uh, the mood. I forget the mood. The mood is very, very essential also. And the mood also affects the kind of uh, fingering is, that is used in Bhadanga. So sometimes if it's a soft mood, you'll find uh, what we call Dunki, what they also use on the Dhaka, uh, played a lot, depending on the kind of composition. So, this, it's, it's very, very difficult to put it in one bus, one, one block, but there is this variance possible. Yeah, uh, yeah you also talked a little bit about Nadez. Um, yeah, I mean, since you're talking about the Bhadanga, see, Tala system in the South Indian 
Carnatic music is very, very complex. Uh, the basic number of talas that we have is about 35. Okay, and uh, there are a few talas which are beyond the 35 cycle. Okay. And then you can multiply these 35 by another five because we also allow for, which is also used in, in other, other forms of music, in, 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 in jazz too, where now this click between two, two, two beats can be filled by three, four, five, seven, or nine. Tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, one, two, three, 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 four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, and seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine. So now this, there's very, very complex math, arithmetic math that is done with this, where you have a sub layering of four, sometimes it's super layered with a layer of five, and then uh, how they use this five within the sub layer of four. So, Nadai, this is known as Nadai, some people call it Gati, and all these things. But the possibilities of purely uh, rhythmical options within, say, one tala is unbelievable. Because the, the factors that are not constant are huge. The constant factor is only the cycle's number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is constant. Okay, if I fix this Adi Tala. Now within this, it can have doubled. So it can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then it could have varied nades, which means each beat could be a, could have three, four, five, seven, nine. So when, for example, there's a rhythmic solo, a Mridana player will start Filling it with four. But what is, does it correspond to something like singing? Where does that relate? When, see the point is, I can. Okay. Um, you are saying. I put I with one, two, three, yeah. four. Or I can, I can put red gale with just, you know. No, 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 no. Can no, no. I not? Nadi, no, can no. Play it so slowly, right? That's all. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. As long as I maintain the beat. No, no, no. There's an association. So I want to know what is this. There's an, that's not Nadi. You're talking about Kale. No, no, whatever. See, one, two, one, two, three. If I keep the time duration, which yeah. needs to be there. Okay. And the cycle is preserved. No. The composition is, that is where. No, See this. A composition that is composed in a, in a whether it's a Pallavi or anything. A composition that is composed in a specific rhythmical form has an association with not just the total number that the form is, but with the subdivided structure of the form. So you could have two talas with the same number of counts, but they are not the same because they are structurally different. And when they are structurally different, the composition reflects the structural difference in them. And it will affect, again, the melodic and the structural flow of the melody if you change the cycle. So you can have, a, you can have two talas with a cycle of 11 or cycle of whatever, you know, cycle of 14. Does it make them equal to each other? It's just that the total number is equal. But if the 14 is divided as 4 and 4 plus 6, that's totally different from if it's divided differently. No, no. I just, I mean, is it possible for you to give us an example of a Pallavi Sangin, let's say, Kandana Dain Nadawan was, what is that? Taka Sakita and then Taka Sakita Saka. I don't understand. The Kandana Dain? And Nadawan, chapter 1, 2, 3. But there's no association between Kandana Dain and Mishra. No, no, no. When you sing the same same phrase, yeah. can you sing it in one context? In this nade and another one. You will change the structure if you have to sing it in different. Because the measurement is different. In that case, yeah, it's I different. But what I want to know is what an example of what. See, I don't see. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, no, I don't understand your question. See, if I have the same phrase, I mean, at least I've seen Aruna Sairam do this. Sorry, I've seen Aruna Sairam do this in one of the. She took Kyavarajas all consistent and sang Sangeet as part of the Adi. And everything was... See, let, let me just tell you. There are, if you a composition, if you're taking a composed composition, it can, it is not easily possible to change it to a different structure. Because the composition has an integrity that is embedded between Raga, Tala and lyrics. Okay? Now, if I compose a Pallavi, which is similar to a Bandeshi they sing, now, if I compose a Pallavi and I structure it in a spe specific cycle, it is possible 
any of this it's possible to put in different structure. I mean that is just mathematics. If it works to 18, it will work to any 18. But if I wanted to reflect the pattern of uh, Kala structure, then I have to rework it along along with the Kala structure. Otherwise, it will not reflect. See, a, a, a composition being in a specific tana is not about measurement. It is about a structural form that the music and the tala reflect each other with. It's an aesthetic dependence of both. And we cannot dissociate both from each other. Absolutely. You can't dissociate both. Just because the total comes to the same, you can't. So if I sang a Pallavi in Kanda Nade some, some tala, if I, I, I mean, I've done that many times, I've sung the same Pallavi in a different tongue, but then I'll restructure it. I'll restructure it to suit that interpretation. That is, that is, that is what is, is the best way to go about it. Yeah, uh, comparing with Hindustani, uh, from, a, from outside, the first uh, difference that you see is that in Carnatic music, the singer marks always the tala, and in especially Rupa when it rises. No, in Drupa In Drupa too. Then that, that's the issue of between the, the relation possible with the closer with... So in Hindustani that's not that common, that the the singer while the... Uh, while Singing, the, the, yeah. the, the tabla. They don't, don't show. So why is that? I mean, why is that in Hindustani there is no need to do that, I guess? And in, in Actually, uh, it's a complex form of music maybe. I do not know. Carnatic music, so I cannot just pass any comment. But while in uh, Khayal uh, and Drupal, Drupal, you know, we do uh, we do dugun, trig, tigun, chogun. That is uh, the main rhythm remains the same, and then we uh, mathematically uh, progress to second, and then third, and then fourth. Uh, this thing. So then, that at that point of time, we have to keep the tala in heart, uh, or somebody has to show. But in Khayal, it is not that system is not there. We uh, actually in Khayal it is called Khayal because uh, it gives so much of liberty to the singer within the gamut of the rag and the tal. And uh, while singing uh, uh, Khayal, uh, you have the liberty of uh, doing improvisation in Vilambit, I mean slow tempo in Vilambit Khayal and fast tempo in the Drut Khayal, that is fast Khayal. Then, uh, uh, so while in Vilambit Khayal, it is so slow that uh, the tabla only can play theka and the gaps are in between two beats are being filled aesthetically, but there is no written uh, notation for that thing. And uh, in Drut Khayal, that is fast tempo Khayal, uh, they follow the theka, only the basic cycle. And again, uh, when they improvise, they will uh, slightly improvise the theka for suiting it aesthetically with the music. But they don't improvise. So we don't have to show the tara while singing. We know that uh, in, in our brain, we have that uh, cycle, that first mantra, uh, first beat is coming and the sum is coming. That we know by practice, we do that. But the thing what uh, she was saying, we have a form called Thumri and Dadra, where we exercise this thing. But, uh, you know, to give a more uh, climax kind of situation at the end of the whole rendition. Like, uh, if I am singing uh, Dadra, uh, set to Dadra Tal. Dadra Tal is uh, 1, 2, 3, one, uh, 4, 5, 6. I mean, 6 beat Tal. So, uh, three matras in every division. So we sing like that. Pani bhare ri kaan al veli kinar chama chama. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is going. Now when we come to the climax, we will just uh, singing, uh, sing it in four bits. We can transform it like that. Pani bhare ri kaan al veli kinare jama jama And we will do the uh, improvisation in that Okay, so thank you. Um, do you, um, Priti, uh, you have some comment? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is simply, I think even in Karnatic it's there. 
if you watch the movie Hum Sugeet Hai, this he is No, no, uh, correction, correction. Uh, I am a Carnatic musician, I can answer that question. I am very sorry that is wrong. Hum Sugeet is a movie, we are talking about Carnatic music here. <laughs> no, 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 hang on. It, it's originally composed in Rupakatala. There's a tradition of singing it in Tishranade Aditala, which came later. Actually, the composition Himadra Sute by Hima or Birana Vara Lichi, both are in the same tune in Raga Kalyani. The Tala is traditionally Rupakatala. Okay? And one school of people sing it as Himadri Sute Pahima Parade, like that. But actually, that is not as if one composition is sung in two talas. It is not the same. It is either, if you sing it in Tisha Nade and your school has taught it, you only sing it in that. If you learnt it in Rupaka Tala, you only sing in Rupaka Tala. This is two different schools. But actually, the historical truth of that is, this singing it in Adi Tala Tisha Nade was a later change by some musicians. It is originally composed in Rupaka Tala. Sute. Both are the same tune, composed by the same composer. It's actually in Rupa Katala, made like this. It is not comparable at all. No, no. Tradition is one thing, experimentation is another thing. No, no, no. no. Uh, is, but anyway, this is... No, no, no. Ma'am, you are you're historically wrong. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, you are wrong. This is not experimentation. This is not accepted. This is not as if singing... It is What she gave an example is an example of, of allowing it to be rendered in that fashion. Here, you will never see a musician starting and sing the charnam. You will never see any musician doing that. If you hear a musician singing it, he will sing it in Rupaka Tala fully, in only that Tala, or they will sing it in Tishanade fully. This, well, that is the question she asked. The, between schools and between styles, there are always variances. But the person who has learned it in that one style will always sing it in that style. That is, the, that is the point that she is trying to make. So this is not the, similar to what example she gave. Her example was a classic example where there is actually a transformation allowed within the presentation of the piece itself. Not, not when you sing Birana Varalichi or, or Himadri Sute Pahima. Or even Birana Varalichi, there is another composition also sung in Tishanade. Some set of people sing it in Tishanade, which is also something that is coming later. This composition was actually composed in Rupakata, in one tala. Not in two. Okay. okay, then uh, maybe we can we can uh, go to the melodic issues. And uh, one uh, one aspect that uh, we are very much interested in, because that's the kind of things that uh, we can do, is uh, to focus on the idea of finding patterns, of finding motifs, of finding phrases. So, of course, the concept of a motif or the concept of a phrase is a very broad concept. And it, it, it has many different layers. It goes to the from the gamaka small type of uh, uh, small um, sort of uh, pitch uh, inflection to or, or ornamentation to sort of uh, a small uh, phrase that is uh, longer or to even to a whole composition. So um, so the issue is that do you find any again any any specificities or differences of how to handle this concept of Phrasing and improvising on, on phrases or structuring your singing uh, with these uh, melodic uh, eight items or melodic uh, units. Maybe if, uh, if you wanna. No, I mean the idea. I, I assume when you improvise, one basic aspect that's our assumption is that you start with uh, either composition or either with some. Uh, set of uh, swaras that uh, give you a sort of a, a unit on which you improvise, yes. no? So how would you describe the process of doing that? I mean, how would, do you, do you, is, are you very conscious as a singer that you're actually are starting from, normally it's called a, a, a motif or a, a, a phrase, <laughs> and that you start from that and then you elaborate on that, you make variations on that, and uh, can, can you verbalize a little bit what is the process of doing that? Actually, what you are saying that um, if I uh, say that I have to sing a rag yaman, then uh, there are some uh, very, uh, you know, uh, some very important phrases that 
just by singing that you can uh, identify the rhyme. So first we 